Welcome again, Leo. It's Didici here from astrology.com.au and uh, boy, what's going on? I hope you're all well there. I hope you're sort of coping uh, and not getting cabin fever, which I'm sure a lot of us are. Look, the uh, speaking of cabin fever, the sign of cancer is your 12th house. You've got the uh, moon and the ascending node conjoined here at the beginning of the month. By the way, it's April 2020, as if you didn't know. Um, I thought I'd just mention it. Uh, for those of you that are new, welcome. Have a look at this chart. Just a few um, little brief aspects that we're going to talk about here. You can get more at the site. I'll tell you about that later. But uh, what's happening here that's of great interest for those of you born under the sun sign of Leo or the ascendant or lunar sign of Leo is this transit of the, sa of the planet Saturn into your seventh house of relationships along with this Mars combination. Now, Mars is your best planet, but Saturn is certainly not. And it can show a uh, accelerator break sort of pattern, as I call it, uh, a simultaneous sort of um, action. You know, you want to move, you can't move. Um, and the full moon here on the 8th is very telling. We, we see a mixed sort of bag of favorable and unfavorable aspects here indicating your communication style you've got to be careful not to be too emotional in the way you portray your needs but this could also be a combination of what i started the reading of saying this cabin fever just being in close proximity needing some space not being able to get it that's the um action of the mars and saturn there in the seventh house and of course that has to do with people generally not just your one-on-one -on -one relationships Fortunately, however, a little bit of a contradiction there because you've got Venus here in your 11th house making a favorable aspect, possibly around the 11th, 12th. You'll see an improvement there as a consequence of this. Venus for you is your uh, career planet. Moving in the 11th house should show some sort of upliftment there around the uh, middle of the month. And also because of its um, favorable influence and contact with this Saturn Mars combo in your seventh house. A better response from other people. Maybe there's less hysteria at this time. Uh, in any case, you'll be able to capitalize on that. And your social life should start to see a slightly better improvement. That's also shown here by Mercury in the sextile aspect from the ninth house to Venus here in your eleventh house. Around the 16th and 17th, a little bit touchy with the moon transiting this stellium here first in your sixth house of health it's going to be around the 14th take care at that time stay indoors if we're still in lockdown and then the transiting of this very frustrating combo around the 15th and 16th in your seventh house you may not be able to get anything done you may not get what you want out of a deal out of the relationship but you may have to wait and don't be too idealistic that's shown here by the eighth house transit of the moon making its contact with Neptune. Neptune for you is an interesting planet. It actually rules your eighth house. So this has to do with your intimacy. It has to do with psychological issues, working through that. But the Neptune can create some fuzzy edges there. So it's very, very important to use this planet, Mercury, which as you can see here, the planet of thought, the planet of reasoning and communication, brings this few day mini cycle into a bit more clarity. You've also got a shift in energies with the sun moving into its best directional area there in the 10th house in Taurus around the 20th, 20th as it moves into the sign of Taurus. Now the career sector here is a perfect position for the sun. And as it moves into the conjunction of Uranus here, I would say to some of you Taurus people, just when you thought that going was getting tougher and things were going bad, bang, something good may happen to you. Um, that's got to do with the combined influence of your ruling planet, the sun, and Uranus, which rules your seventh house. So if you've been looking for a breakthrough in the relationships, in your business partnerships, in the way your customers um, and your PR is going, then this here you see a perfect conjunction there. And then you've also got the moon conjoining Venus in the 11th house of profits on the 26th, 27th. 
that is an excellent date to look out for. I also forgot to mention there that around the 23rd, you've got the new moon in your 10th house. So as well as the exciting, unexpected combination of the sun and Uranus, you've got that that new moon taking place in your career sector. So that opens new doors for you. Don't be negative about what's going down around you. Just keep your mind focused. Make your communications there in the last couple of days of the month. That being said, because of the excellent second ruler, second ruler Mercury here, second ruler ruling your income, also simultaneously ruling your profits. So even if you're in business for yourself, this indicates very, very powerful opportunities at the very tail end of April, uh, Leo, and that's going to set the trend for the following month, which I'm going to tell you about next month if you'd be good enough to come back. In the meantime, astrology.com.au, I wanted to tell you I'm really excited about the new look astrology.com.au and our new page there. There's a couple of pages. There's the weekly horoscope forecast and the personal natal report, absolutely free, beautiful report there that you can get. Um, if you need to know more about that, you can text me. If you want a personal reading, I'm here for you. This is probably one of the best times in your life to get it. And I hope I'm the astrologer for you. Uh, we'll soon know. I'm happy to talk to you for a few minutes if you want, just to get a few little hints. See you next month. Stay safe. Be happy. Bye-bye now.